Hi friends, have you heard of an amazing video camera with a resolution of 576 megapixels? It has autofocus and great image stabilization. It works well both in bright light and low light conditions. And do you know the best part? You don't have to charge the battery. So do you know which video camera I'm talking about? That's right, it's the human eye and it's going to be the topic of this video. In this video, we'll take a journey into the human eye and look at the different parts of the eye and how it works. And as usual, we'll finish off with our top three questions on this topic. Let's start with the front portion of the eye. So what's visible to us when we look at someone's eye? The white portion of the eye is called the sclera. It's opaque and acts as a protective layer of the eye. Now the circular part in the center has a transparent layer on it called the cornea. And this colored portion of the eye is called the iris. It controls the amount of light entering the eye. There's a hole in the center of the iris called the pupil through which the light enters the eye. The pupil appears black because no light is reflected from it. So this was just the front portion of the eye. Now let's take a look at the full eye and what's inside it. If you look at the side view, it looks something like this. As you can see, the eye is approximately spherical in shape. So we call it the eyeball. The eyeball has a diameter of approximately 25 millimeters. As we saw earlier, the front layer of the eye is called the cornea. The cornea bulges outwards. The cornea is transparent. It's transparent so that light can enter the eye. The function of the cornea is to refract the light rays to help form an image in the eye. So as you can see here, light enters from air into the cornea. The refractive index of air is approximately 1 and the refractive index of the cornea is 1.376. So light is entering from a rarer to a denser medium. So a lot of bending of light is happening at the cornea. And the other function of the cornea is to act as a protective layer of the eye. Do you know why different people have different colored eyes? It's due to our next part, the iris. The color of the iris depends on the amount of melanin present in it. The iris is a flat, colored, ring-shaped membrane that is located behind the cornea. There's a hole in the center of the iris called the pupil through which the light enters the eye. The function of the iris is to control the amount of light entering the eye by adjusting the size of the pupil here. When you are in bright sunlight, what do you think the iris does? Increase or decrease the size of the pupil? That's right. The correct answer is it decreases the size of the pupil so that less amount of light enters your eye and you can see clearly. But now let's say you go into a dark place like a movie theater and you are hunting for your seat. So then the iris increases the size of the pupil so that more light enters your eye and you can see better. So that's why you must have noticed that when you go from bright light into a dark room, it takes some time for our eyes to adjust to the dark room. There is a liquid in the front part of the eye between the cornea and the eye lens called the aqueous humor. The function of the aqueous humor is to maintain the fluid pressure inside the eye. This hydrostatic pressure helps keeps the walls of the eyeball tight and maintain the roughly spherical shape of the eye. The aqueous humor also provides nutrition, for example, amino acids and glucose to various parts of the eye, such as the cornea and the eye lens. Next, we have the eye lens. The eye lens is transparent, soft 
and flexible. Did you know that our lens is a living thing? It's made up of cells. Now which type of lens does the human eye have? Is it a concave or a convex lens? That's right, the correct answer is a convex lens. As you can see, the lens is thick in the center and thin at the edges. So it's a convex lens and it has a converging action. The job of the eye lens is to refract the light rays so that we get a clear image on the retina. The human eye lens has a refractive index of approximately 1.4. The lens is flexible. It can change its shape and thickness. So it adjusts its focal length. The lens does this so that we can focus on objects at different distances and we get a clear image on our retina. This adjustment of the eye lens is known as power of accommodation. But we'll talk more about this later in the video. The eye lens is held in position by suspensory ligaments. One end of the suspensory ligaments is attached to the eye lens and the other end is attached to the ciliary muscles as shown here. Now depending on the distance of the object that we are looking at, the ciliary muscles change the thickness of the eye lens to focus the light rays on the retina. This gives our eye the power of accommodation. Behind the eye lens, you have the space called the vitreous chamber. It contains a fluid called the vitreous humor. The function of the vitreous humor is to support the lens and maintain the shape of the eyeball. The vitreous humor is 99% water and contains no cells so that light can pass through it without being deflected. The fluid here acts like a liquid lens and further helps to focus the light rays on the retina. At the back part of the eye, we have the screen on which the image is formed. This screen is called the retina. The retina is like the film in the old film cameras or the digital sensor in today's digital cameras. The retina contains a large number of light sensitive cells known as rods and cones. The rod cells are sensitive to the intensity of light. So they help us to distinguish between light and dark. And the cone cells are sensitive to the color of the object. The cone cells work under normal or bright light. Let's try an experiment to show this. If I reduce the lights in this room, can you tell the color of the objects in my hand? You can't, right? Because the cones need more light to recognize the color. Right now your rod cells are working because you are able to distinguish that I am holding some objects in my hand. And now when we turn on all the lights, you can easily see the color of these two balls. So the rods give us light and dark information and the cones give us the color information. And it's easy to remember. C for cone, C for color. There is a nerve called the optic nerve which is attached to the retina. The optic nerve transmits all the visual information from the retina to the brain so that we can see the world around us. The eye acts like the camera and the brain gives us the vision. Now at the point where the optic nerve meets the retina, there are no light sensitive cells. So no rods and cones. This is known as the blind spot since no vision is possible at this point. So if the image falls on the blind spot, we cannot see the image. Do you know what type of image is formed on the retina? The correct answer is it's a real and inverted image and it's diminished. It's a real image since it's formed on the screen of the eye, the retina. Now we know that real images are inverted. So do you know that the video you're watching right now 
is actually inverted on your retina, then why doesn't this video or the world around us appear inverted? Thankfully, the brain perceives it as an upright image. Otherwise, the world would appear upside down. Let's place the summary table of the parts of the human eye and their function on our concept board. Now that we know the important parts of the human eye, let's understand how they work together to help us see. To understand the working of the human eye, it's useful to compare the eye to a camera. Now when you're taking a photo or a video, the first thing you need to do is remove the lens cap. Similarly, we need to open our eyes for us to see. Next, you want to set the aperture or the opening in the camera so that the right amount of light enters the camera. Now, if the aperture is too small, then the video will appear dark like this. Or if the aperture is too big, then the video will be too bright. Ah, now the aperture is set to just the right value. Similarly, the opening in the eye is called the pupil. The size of the pupil determines the amount of light entering the eye. Now, who controls the size of the pupil? That's right, the iris controls the size of the pupil. Next, we need to turn the focusing ring in the camera to focus on the object we are taking a video of. Now, let's say I'm the object. If I'm out of focus, I look blurred. Now, if we adjust the focus in the camera, as you can see, I appear clear now. I showed you all these settings in the manual mode of the camera. But usually we keep the camera in the autofocus mode so that we don't have to worry about these settings. Similarly, the human eye is like an autofocus camera. It automatically adjusts the size of the pupil and focuses the light rays to get a clear image on the retina. So both the camera and the human eye have their focusing mechanism. But there's an important difference in how they do their focusing. In the camera, the focusing is done by the movement of the lens. But in the eye, the focusing is done by changing the shape and the thickness of the lens. But first, let's take a closer look as to why the camera or the eye needs to do this focusing adjustment. Let's start with the case where the eye is looking at an object, let's say a tree that is really far away. We say that the tree is at infinity. As you can see, the light rays will be parallel. The eye lens along with the cornea focus the image on the retina and we can see a clear image of the tree. Now let's say the eye is looking at a nearby object like a book. Since the book is close to the eye, the rays from the book are not parallel, they are divergent. So if the eye makes no adjustment, the image will be formed behind the retina and the book will not appear clear to us. The text in the book will look blurred. So what does the eye do? It needs to change the focal length or the converging power of the eye lens. Since the rays are divergent for the nearby object like this book here, it needs to increase the converging power of the lens to get the rays to focus on the retina. The ciliary muscles contract. This makes the suspensory ligaments that are attached to the eye lens loose. The flexible eye lens bulges under its own elasticity and the eye lens becomes thicker. So we get a clear image on the retina. This is called the accommodated state of the eye. But when the object is far away, at infinity, the ciliary muscles are in a relaxed position. The relaxed ciliary muscles pull the suspensory ligaments tightly. The eye lens gets stretched and the lens becomes thin. Focal length of the lens is more and the image is focused on the retina. This is called the unaccommodated state 
since it's the relaxed state of the eye. This autofocus ability of the eye to focus the distant and nearby objects on the retina by changing the focal length of the lens is called the power of accommodation. You can try this yourself. Just hold a book and look far off and then suddenly look at the book. You'll notice that the eye takes some time to adjust to the text in the book. This is the power of accommodation. To understand how much power of accommodation the eye has, let's talk about the far point and the near point. Far point is the furthest distance that the eye can see the objects clearly. For the normal eye, that is the person who doesn't wear eyeglasses, he can see far off objects like hills, mountains and clouds clearly. Now he may not be able to see all the details, but they don't appear blurred to him. So for the normal eye, the far point is at infinity. Near point is the minimum distance at which an object should be placed for the person to be able to see it clearly and without any strain. You can try this yourself. Take a book and see how close you can bring the book and still read it comfortably. The letters should not appear blurred to you. This will be your near point. So for the normal eye, if you don't have eyeglasses, the near point is 25 centimeter. This is also known as the least distance of distinct vision. So the power of accommodation of the normal eye is from 25 centimeters to as far as infinity. But for a person having far-sightedness or short-sightedness, the near point and far point will be different. We'll take a look at that in a separate video. Do you know why we have two eyes? To help answer this question, you can ask someone to hold a pencil and you try touching the tip of the pencil but with one eye closed. You'll find it's not easy to do that. So the two eyes help us with the perception of depth. It's called stereoscopic vision. And do remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow my Facebook page. And do check out my website manochaacademy.com To revise the concepts, do try the quiz and the top three questions on this topic. Links are given below the video. Thanks for watching.